All right, circle of trust time. What is your confidence level for Atlanta this Sunday at home against the Saints? Can Arthur Smith come back from a bye and beat the hated Aints? Or are we going to see Atlanta lose four in a row? Be honest with me, confidence level, one to ten, down in the comments. What's going on, everyone? Welcome on in to Falcons Today by Chat Sports. Hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Now, we're going to jump into our preview for a critical, what I am dubbing, a must-win game. Did I call the Falcons Cardinals a must-win game, you ask? Yes, I did. Did I say the season would be over if they lost that game? Allegedly. But this time, I really do mean it. It is win or go home. Because just the circumstances. You're at home. First division game against the Saints. The opportunity to actually jump to first in the division with a win. However, a loss, 4-7, and seven, they're done. Kaput. Dunzos. So let's set a little bit of a primer for this game. Let's look at Atlanta's offense against the Saints' defense this year, how they stack up head-to-head, -head. just going off the numbers here. Falcons doing a decently good job, actually, believe it or not, on third down, one of the best in the league at converting. Red zone above 50%. We'll take it. Turnovers are an issue, although 13 of those 16 come from one player single-handedly. Meanwhile, Atlanta's defense prepares for a Saints offense that is not firing on all cylinders, right? The Derek Carr experience has not been wonderful. We'll talk more about DC a little bit later on and the injury status for him, but big numbers to look at here comes down to red zone percentage. I think the Saints have or the Saints having under 50% success in the red zone. Meanwhile, the Falcons defense stopping teams from scoring touchdowns in the red zone less than 50%. That's not oil meeting water, that is water meeting water and that is in favor of Atlanta. Now, let's get into the injury report for both sides before I give you my five keys to victory. Taylor Heineke is limited with a hamstring injury. If he cannot go, Logan Woodside would be the backup for Desmond Ritter. Matt Collins, David Onyemata, and D. Alford, three key starters to keep an eye on throughout the week. I am optimistic that all three players will be available on Sunday. Young Wei Koo, this is an interesting one to watch for. The Falcons released Demir Bird, the wide receiver, from their practice squad. They are going to add a kicker at some point over the next 24, 48 hours. I will do a short on that when it happens. And Young Wei Koo at the back might not be available, and that could be dangerous because he has been Atlanta's best player, I would say, on offense this year. Like, just in terms of scoring, he is automatic as always. As for the bad guys, the New Orleans Saints, Derek Carr is dealing with a concussion. Now, he is still in concussion protocol, but he was a full participant on Wednesday, which is a uh, benchmark you have to pass in order to clear concussion protocol. So he seems to be trending in the right direction, although no one really knows how to get out of concussion protocol. So it's impossible to say whether or not he will be 100% available for Sunday. K uh, Kendra Miller, the rookie running back, did not practice. Michael Thomas is on IR. We will not see him this week. James Hurst, their offensive lineman, did not practice. And Marshawn Lattimore, the best player on their defense after Cam Jordan, and maybe just the best player altogether, he did not practice with an ankle injury. That would be a big loss and a big factor for Drake London and this passing game. Now, before I give you guys my keys to victory, it's not great right now. The Falcons are at 4-6. and six. They are looking at another losing season, a third straight losing season under Arthur Smith. But if you are a ride-or-die fan, no matter what, well, this is the channel to be at because we do not just pack shit up when the Falcons lose to the Cardinals, a one-win team. No. We stick with you guys all season long, so make sure to subscribe and help us get to 16,350 16, subscribers. We're 15 away. Please join the channel if you have not already. Now my keys to victory. Key number one, feed B. John Robinson. Why? Because you took him eighth overall. You have to justify using a top 10 pick on a running back with a lot of usage, which we did see finally in week 10, the last time the Falcons took the field, a season high or career high, 22 carries for 95 yards and one touchdown. All together on the season, Bijan, you might think, Petey, he's not getting a lot of usage because he's not averaging a whole lot. The dude's averaging nearly a first down every time he touches the ball, or every two times he touches the ball, right? Nearly five yards a pop. 
So I don't really understand the lack of usage. I don't think anyone does. But the good news is, as someone who listened to Arthur Smith's press conference on Wednesday, he gave an overall, we'll say, aura that we're going to see more of Bijan over the coming weeks. So Art, here's some free advice coming from an overweight YouTuber. Is the team in a funk? Yes. Let's follow the flow chart. Team in a funk? Yes. Go to your star players. Like, think about it this way. If you had your life on the line as a head coach and you had to score a touchdown, are you going to go with B. John Robinson or are you going to do a jet sweep to John U. Smith? I would go with B. John. So, Art, while your life might not be on the line here, your head coaching career might be on the line here. Go to your star players in B. John Robinson. You guys are going to le- love my next key to victory. We're also feeding Drake London. It's Thanksgiving. Everyone's going to get a slice of the Atlanta off- Atlanta Falcons offense on Sunday. Drake London this year only has one game over 100 receiving yards, 474 yards altogether, two touchdowns, 40 receptions. I mean, Jonu Smith, for crying out loud, and I hate to pick on Jonu because he's actually been a really good player, but he's got 35 grabs. We need to get Drake London the ball more. I was talking about this with one of our producers here. It's like, hey, should I start Drake London in my fantasy league? And I was like, first off, no one gives a shit about your fantasy league. But if I did care, I would say this. I don't really understand why Drake London is not getting better numbers because it's definitely not a talent issue, right? We know Drake London is an extremely talented receiver. This is not a bus guy or anything like that. But ultimately, I have more free advice, this time for Desmond Ritter. Your starting role for 2024 is in jeopardy. It is not looking likely that you will return as this team's starting quarterback next year. If you want to flip that narrative, here's some free advice. Go to your star wide receiver. If I'm Desmond Ritter and I'm walking out of the huddle and I'm thinking I've got an entire fan base split on whether or not I should come back as the starter, and it's not a 50-50 split, it's like a 70-30 split, and the 30% is just my mom and my dad, I would probably think, let's throw the ball to Drake London this play and not Scotty Miller. No offense, Scotty. Go to your star players when you're in a rut. Now, before we get on to the rest of my keys to victory, Prize Picks, our awesome sponsor, is here to say you guys can have a lot of fun this Thanksgiving hitting up Prize Picks and winning up to 25 times your money. So if you're going to go on a walk with your cousin, you're trying to avoid some family time over Thanksgiving, well, make sure you use Prize Picks to stay locked in on all of the games tomorrow. Christian McCaffrey, I'm taking the more on his rushing and receiving combined at half a yard. It's one yard for CMC. He can get that done. Jameer Gibbs, more on his rushing and receiving yards combined. I'll take the more on Tony Pollard's rushing yard. Just get three running backs from all three games and cheer for yards. That sounds like a blast to me while stuffing my face with bread and cheese. And then Brandon Ayuk plus DK Metcalf, more than half a receiving touchdown. We just need one from those two players combined. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. I took an oath before I started this job that I would never give BS cliche keys to victory like win the turnover battle. But when you have a quarterback in Desmond Ritter who has turned it over 13 times, I have to break that oath. And I have to say out loud because maybe he doesn't know that he's not supposed to. He, and that might not be his fault. So let, let's, let's set the record clear, Desmond. Stop turning the ball over. 13 turnovers. Unacceptable. Especially when they happen in the red zone. Especially when they happen numerous times. Which means more than once. At the one yard line. Which is very difficult to do. Multiple times. So Desmond, if you didn't know, now you do know. So there's no more excuses. Stop turning the ball over. Be smarter with the football when you're running with the ball. Be smarter with your decision-making when throwing the ball. I'm not trying to neuter you. I'm not trying to give you a stip snip here. But what I'm trying to say is be smarter with the football. Now, it is Desmond Ritter for this week, and I believe the rest of the season. But I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Is that the right decision? Should it be Desmond Ritter? 
or was the Falcons and Arthur Smith too quick to pull the plug on Heineke and go back to Ritter? Give me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Fourth key to victory for ATL, score off turnovers. This defense got off to a really good start in takeaways, right? Mostly just Jesse Bates. And then they really cooled off. And now they've slowly got back to taking the ball away. We've seen the four turnovers in the last three games. So when we're looking at the losing streak, it's not key to victory, generate turnovers. No, 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 they're doing a good job of taking away the ball. The issue is the Falcons have scored four field goals off of four turnovers the last three games. No touchdowns. Now let's look at those three losses, okay? Week eight against the Titans. They lost by five points. If you score a touchdown instead of a field goal and go for two, if I'm getting the math down correctly, that would be five points. And you would be tied with the Saint, with the Titans going into overtime, okay? Week nine against the Vikings. If you score a touchdown instead of a field goal, you win the game. You win. Week 10 against the Cardinals. If you score a touchdown instead of a field goal, you win the game. So all these three losses could have been flipped with a touchdown instead of a chip shot young way coup field goal. Punch the ball in after the defense gives you a free possession. Final key to victory for Arthur Smith. I hope you've been writing, out, writing this down, Art. Uh, win the head coaching battle. This game features maybe two of the dumber coaches in football, in Dennis Allen and Arthur Smith. At times, they look like extreme dum-dums on the sideline. Like, Arthur Smith has some great dumb faces, and Dennis Allen's just a dumb guy in together. Put them on the same field. We might get a bit of a, like, impractical joker scene out there, right? Like, this might turn into Sal going, all right, Art, now give it to John R. Smith on the goal line. Like, he, he, I, I, does he think that this is like a hidden camera show or something? And the same goes for Dennis Allen. Like, he's equally dumb as well. So, who can be less dumb? Hopefully, it's Arthur Smith. Hopefully, he does not suffer from a turkey hangover or anything like that. But this one might come down to which head coach makes fewer mistakes and makes fewer dumb decisions. And I hope it is Atlanta. And that is why I am predicting the Falcons to win this game. 31-28. to 28. I'm basically speaking this one into existence here, and they save their season. Otherwise, it's done. But it's not so done that you have to stop watching our videos. Don't ever do that. All right, enjoy Thanksgiving. We'll see you all later.